Hey everyone, welcome back to Manatic String Works. Today I'm going to show you how you take a sock filled with rice, <laughs> heat it up, and use it to help you straighten out a bent neck on a bass or electric guitar. So it's the first time I've tried this. I've seen a lot of videos where people have uh, dedicated machines, you know, heating irons, different kinds of cool setups like that, but I thought I'd try this out and see if that would work. If you can't afford a new setup, you don't want to buy it, hey, you know, here's something you can do. So, old sock, lots of rice, put in the microwave, and here we go. So, stick around. I hope you enjoy the video. <laughs> Talk to you later. All right, let's start by checking the neck relief at the seventh fret. So we like to see about 12 thousandths. And right now, a 12 thousand gauge slides under there, no problem. Let me try like an 18 thousandths gauge and see how that does. Uh, I don't think it's touching. Let's try 20. Yeah, there's just way too much neck relief. So normally with too much neck relief, we would just tighten up the tension rod, right? The truss rod, but that's the problem with this base, is we are basically pinned all the way. There is no more room to tighten that tension rod. So we have to come up with a solution to get rid of that bow in the neck. So really the only way to get rid of the bow, or one of the ways, is we're going to try using heat to warm up the neck while it's being clamped down in the position we want and leaving it set. So we're reactivating the glue and then letting it set again and hopefully that will help us straighten out the neck. I don't think just mechanically like trying to clamp it down into the position will work. So what we'll have to do is basically take off the strings, take off the neck plate, remove the neck and then we'll see how we can set it up on the workbench to heat it up and get it in the right position. Alright, let's go. Alright, so see the truss rod end here. Okay. Alright, well let's get this on the workbench and then we're gonna straighten it out. Alright, so before we do anything to the neck, we're gonna release the tension on the truss rod. We're gonna back it right off. And we're going to physically, mechanically, with clamps, put it in the position we want. And then we'll tighten the truss rod up. And apply the heat. Does it feel loose? Yeah. Alright, so that's good. We don't want to back it out of the hole, so we'll get it set it up now. So now we've got no resistance at all. I'll just tighten it off just a bit. It doesn't slip around, fall out. There we go, it's starting to grab. Alright, 
So that's just started to grab. Perfect. So you can see now that we've released the tension on the truss rod that we have a big bow in the middle of the neck right, as we go along. So there's you know big space and then it goes all the way up to flush the 22nd fret. So first fret we're flush, big bow, 22nd fret, we're flush again. So we're going to clamp this down and straighten that out. Alright, so here's the uh, rough setup that we're going to use. So determine the middle of the neck. It's right around the 9th, 10th fret. Clamp to one end, lightly. Clamp the other end, lightly. Then we're going to apply pressure on both clamps. So effectively pulling down both ends so that we achieve a back bow now. So not just straight, but we want something that goes like that. So we'll do that slowly and see where we end up. Okay, so we're going to attempt to clamp this down and create that back bow. So I'll do the headstock side first. We can do the other side now a bit. Okay, so let's stop there, and we're going to check with the notched straight edge, see how we did. Okay, well, so the notched straight edge is sitting flush right on the 8th, 9th, 10th frets, but it's rocking everywhere else, right? So we've created a back bow, and I think we'll leave it there. So now that we have that back bow position, we have no tension on the truss rod nut at all. So we're going to tighten the truss rod nut up until it's good and tight. And we'll check the position of the neck again. So that's tight. Let's have a look and see if we still have that back bow. Yeah, we still have the back bow, so that's good. So I can I probably have a little more room to go with the truss rod nut. Yeah. So we want to get that tight so that it stays in the tightest position in the back bow. So once we take it out of the heat, well, theoretically, we should just have to loosen the neck a little bit if we need to, right? Or not at all. So, okay, that's good. Let's leave it like that. Next step is applying some heat to this neck. So here's what we're going to use to heat up that neck. Like I said, it's just an old sock with filled with rice. So you can use different types of beans or anything else you think will go in there, but I've got rice in here, so we'll put it in the microwave and heat it up, hopefully get it to around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll see how it works. Alright. Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> Alright, let's see what the temperature is. I'm just going to place this thermometer, kitchen thermometer, just sort of inside, fold it over, see where we are. Yeah, so that's getting good and hot, right? But by the time we get this down into the shop, get it in place, it will have dropped temperature by then. Yeah, so look, 195. So you could probably do this for about two minutes, but it's going to vary, of course, depending on what you have inside your sock, right? So let's go down in the shop and see how it works. Alright, we're back down in the shop. We've got the rice bag ready. So I'm just going to place it right, spread it out here on the fretboard. It's 
still very hot. It's obviously going to cool down. Move this up a little bit. Okay. So because the sock and the rice inside is you know pretty malleable, of course, we can get this right over the fretboard. Yeah, that's good and hot. That's going to cool down relatively fast. So I think what we'll do is we'll take this towel and we're just going to lay it on top. And trap in some of that heat, all right? There we go. Okay, well, I think we'll just let it sit here and cook <laughs> until it cools right down, and then we'll check it probably later on tonight or tomorrow morning. All right. All right, so we've heated up the neck using our sock <laughs> filled with rice. We've let it sit. It's actually a couple of days later. I'm sure it cooled down within a few hours. Take that off. Here's our little sock bag. And there's the neck. So what we'll do is I'll check and see if we're still in a back bow. We should be. Yes, we're rocking around there, right? Okay, so we'll undo the clamps and then we'll check the neck on the bench. Get these clamps off. Let me check how the neck did on the bench. Alright, so we'll use the straight edge, 34 inch scale. Let's put it on and see if the neck straightened out. So again, we've tensioned up the truss rod nut. We've heated up the neck, the fretboard and the neck, and before we had a big bow in it. So now let's have a look and see where we are. Well, I think you can see that's a lot better than it was before. We had lots of room under that seventh fret, the ninth, seventh fret. Now there's just a little bit, not much. So we probably could heat this up again, uh, or we can try putting it back on the base. I think we're going to heat it up again and see if we can get this neck to be perfectly straight or with a little bit of a back bow with no tension on it. All right, we'll do that again. All right, so we've heated up the neck a second time. We had it in a back bow position, clamped down on the table, put our beanbag heater on top, and now we've taken the heat off, of course. We've re removed the clamps. Now we're going to see what condition our neck is in. So it's in a back bow still because we've tensioned the rod before we put the heater on. So that's good. So when we have string tension, that means the neck should come up a little bit. So we're not going to adjust the tension at the nut yet. We're going to string this up and then see where we are. Okay, we'll be back in a sec. Alright, so we have the body back on the bench. There's a shim in there that was there already. Snick this in there. There we go. That looks good. So we're going to flip that over. I like to lay it down right here on the foam pad, so that's good. Everything's in there, and we'll start putting the screws in.
Alright, so now we've got the base restrung. So we're just going to get it up to tuned tension. So that's going to give us an idea of how the neck is reacting now once it's under that string tension. It's no use trying to adjust the neck until you're under proper tuned tension, of course. Like we do everything on the base, we always tune it up. Alright, well that's close enough to start our adjustment. Alright, so we're under string tension, we're tuned up. Let's see where we are as far as the neck relief goes. So we like to see 12 thousandths at the 7th fret. So right there. So I'm going to hold the string down where it meets the neck and body joint. Yeah, so I have to push that under, it's obviously scraping. So. Let's try something like eight thousandths, which is really low. Yeah, it's still scraping, right? So we don't have much neck relief. Interestingly though, if I play the open strings, there's really hardly any buzz at all. <laughs> So we might be able to have this with a really low neck relief. So I'm going to shoot for maybe 10 thousandths on this, on this particular base. So let's try that. Alright, so we need to get a 4 mil hex wrench in there. So we're going to have to loosen off these strings to get at it. It's also good when you're relieving the tension, you don't really have to do anything to loosen the strings, but because we have no access, <laughs> we need to do that. So let's put the 4 mil in there. Here is a 4 mil wrench. So I'm going to find. Now, this hex, this truss rod nut was a little gummed up. Oh, there we go. So we're going to loosen it, right? So we go counterclockwise. So to the left, lefty loosey. So I'm going to go just maybe. You know, quarter turn. Let's see how we're doing. There we go. Okay. So that was probably the glue that had reactivated in the neck and maybe around the truss rod itself a little bit. So that's why it was a little harder, but now we've broken through that. So we've given it a quarter turn, a little less than a quarter turn. Let's get this back up to tune. So we might have to do this a couple of times, you know, two, three times to get it right. So back in a sec. All right, so we're gonna check, we're gonna check where we are now. So we've got the capo back on. I'd like to see 12 thousandths at the seventh fret. And that is nice. It's just touching the feeler gauge. So probably could tighten the nut just a little bit but we've definitely got the relief we're looking for. So that's perfect. All right, so let's check the string height and then we should be good to go. All right, so let's see where we are with the string height. So again, I'll use my gauges. I like to see between five and six sixty-fourths. So five at the low end, six at the high end. So we'll start with five at the 17th fret on a Fender style bass. And then you can hear it hitting there, right? So there as well. Oh, the E string is yeah, the E string's probably right at five. So really it's the A, D, and G string that we're gonna raise up a little bit. Okay, let's do that. Alright, so using my gauge, I'm gonna put it at a five under the string. We're going to raise up these strings just a touch. And again, if you feel any resistance at all with the hex screws, loosen up the string first, right? Okay, that's good. I don't... Uh, maybe a little more.
Again, there's no rush when you're doing these adjustments, right? Just take your time. All right, we'll get the D string up. That's good. And the A string. Small increments. Don't have to make big changes right away. I like that too. So that's pretty good. And then the E string was good. So it's important as well that your saddles are nice and even too. You don't want them unbalanced, right? So nice and even. So both of these hex screws are supporting the weight, the tension of the string down to the bridge, which transfers the sound through the whole guitar. All right, we'll do a final check here in a second. Okay, so I think we've had some success here. Let's see if we can sight down the neck of it here. And so here we are under tension. We're set up 12 thousandths neck relief at the 7th fret. We have a 564 string height. And that neck looks you know, very straight, right? Okay, let's have a look at it in profile here. And if we contrast that to what we had earlier when we started, we had a lot more relief in the middle of the neck. So, so far it looks like a success. You know, we'll see after uh, a week or two if the neck holds its shape. If it doesn't hold its shape, it just means the neck is done. <laughs> and it's time to get a new neck or look for a new base. Here the bass is playing a lot better. It used to buzz right around the 12th, 13th, 14th frets. The neck relief is good, the action's height, so I think we have a successful neck repair. So I'll check it again in a couple of weeks and see if it remains in the state that it is now. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.